Now there's that old saying, cleanliness is next to godliness. Well, in case of your car's engine, as far as I'm concerned, that's a bunch of nonsense. Check out my old Salica's engine. Dirty and greasy, still running strong after all these years. I've never cleaned it. But take my shiny Triumph motorcycle. Look how clean that engine is. That I clean. And why is that other than vanity? It's because my Triumph is an air-cooled motorcycle. And my car, it's a water-cooled engine. It's water that cools the engine. With a motorcycle, air has to blow over the fins on the cylinder to help cool the engine down. If it gets dirty and greasy, that'll keep it from dissipating heat that well. But in most cars these days, they're water-cooled. You want to keep all the fins cleaned here, down inside here where the air flows to cool the radiator, you want that all clean. But the engine itself doesn't matter if it's dirty. The heat is dissipated through the radiator, not the engine itself. And modern cars have so many electronic parts in them. You start spraying cleaner than hosing it off with water, or even worse, using a pressure washer at a car wash. You can destroy the electronics of the car cleaning it. And over the years I've had scores of customers that have done that or their friends did it to their cars and they towed them over to me. Sometimes I had to buy new computers because the wiring shorted out from all the water and cleaner and ended up frying the computer. I've even had it where they put so much spray inside there that it sucked water inside the air filter and then hydro locked the engine and ended up bending the piston rods. So unless you're planning on having a picnic inside your car's hood, it's stupid to clean your engine. It doesn't serve any purpose. Heck, you can't even see the stuff until you open the hood. Yeah, polish the hood and the paint make it look nice, but hey, you don't live under here. But that said, there are times when you want a clean crud off of your engine, and that has to do with leaks, oil leaks especially. Oil does not go well with electricity. I've had many customers They'll have a leaking valve cover gasket. That'll end up leaking down. It can get on the alternator. It can get on the starter. And that oil will eventually short it out. And the same thing goes for coolant leaks. If you get coolant leaks and coolant is leaking on the alternator or the starter or the distributor, any electronic parts, that can ruin them. And you need to remove that stuff after you fix the problem. Of course. Cleaning it doesn't fix the problem. You have to fix the problem first. If a valve cover gasket is leaking, you replace that. Then you clean all the residue oil off so it doesn't do any damage. If you look under your car and you see things leaking, first you figure out what's leaking, find the source of the leak, fix it, and then clean the mess up. And to find the leaks, I use this ultraviolet leak dye. You put it in whatever's leaking, the engine oil, the coolant, whatever. Then you use an ultraviolet light and these funky yellow sunglasses and you can see where the leak's coming from. And since leaks leak all over the place, it's often hard to pinpoint where it starts. So the ultraviolet leak dye really has made it easier for people to find leaks. But then if you have oil or coolant all over the place, you do want to clean that off so the residue doesn't destroy electronics. And to do that, you're going to use engine degreaser, but the first thing is Take off the negative battery terminal. You don't want to short out electronics. So, you want to loosen it, wiggle it, move it out of the way. Then you want to carefully spray the degreaser on the greasy parts, wherever the leaks were. And here's yet another tip. You want to do it on an ice cold engine. This one's been sitting all night, so it's nice and cold. You don't want to be spraying degreaser on a hot engine. And then when you rinse it off with a hose, you don't want ice cold water hitting a red hot engine. And you can make metal crack, gaskets could go, you don't want to mess around with heat, so do this all on a cold car. Now, of course, things like alternators, look, they're exposed to the weather. When it rains, water comes up from the bottom, water comes through the radiator, it gets wet. It's made that it can take a little bit of water, but you don't want to have cleaner and electricity going through it and then water with it connected to the system, so now there's no power going to it and it's cool, so you won't have any problems if you do it on a cool engine with the battery disconnected. But that said, you still don't want to be spraying things like the distributor. It's all electronic. You don't want to get this stuff wet. Some guys will even put a plastic bag on it. And definitely stay away from things like circuit boxes 
and relay boxes. You don't want to get them wet. Then like most things in life, have a little patience. It's a good idea to wait half an hour, 45 minutes for the degreaser to soak in, to do its thing, and if it's really dirty, you can get a scrub brush and you can scrub some of it off. When I was a young mechanic, we used to use kerosene on the garage floor, spray it on, then scrub it, and then hose it off. Well, this is the same idea, only I'm not doing this. I'm using one of these fingernail scrubbers. It helps to agitate it, and if it's been on there a while, it'll get the really tough parts off. And then just wait, like I said, half an hour, 45 minutes. Then get your garden hose and hose it off. And again, just do this on a cold engine so you won't have any problems. You can wait a couple hours for it to dry or do what I do. Get a giant fan. It'll dry it a lot quicker. Then when it's dry, put the battery terminal back on. Don't forget to tighten it up. And away you go. Now to begin with, I'll give you a general idea about oil additives in cars. Modern engine oils are really well designed and produced. You buy a brand new car, you use the correct oil that they suggest and change it frequently. You don't need to put any additives in your oil, period. But if you bought a used car that burns a reasonable amount of oil, or you were a bad person and you didn't change your engine oil enough and now your engine is worn internally, oil additives can actually help. I bought this Toyota Celica used and the main reason I got it cheap was because it was using oil and the customer thought, oh, you know, it's using oil, it's wearing out, I'll get another car. She went out and bought a Toyota Avalon. She was burning about a quart of oil every 900 miles in that Celica. She had to keep adding the oil. She had a case in the trunk. <laughs> Change the oil and filter, put in three quarts of Castrol GTX and one quart of this heavy duty thick stabilizer from Lucas. And lo and behold, that will only burn about half a quart of oil in between oil changes. And now it used half a quart instead of a quart every 900 miles. Quite an improvement, I gotta say. But you do have to understand what type of engine is in here. It's a Toyota four cylinder engine, it doesn't have hydraulic valve lifters. It's just got those stainless steel shims. So there's no hydraulic valve lifter with the tiny little holes that the oil has to get into to pump up to adjust the valves. If you add a thick oil like this to an engine that has hydraulic valve lifters, they can start clattering like mad. I've seen that. And even further, this is a plain old engine. It's got a solid cam that spins and opens and closes the intake and the exhaust valves. It does not have variable valve timing. You put a thick oil into a car that's got variable valve timing and buemo. A lot of times it'll cause problems in the variable valve timing system. So you really can't use this heavy stuff in any modern car. Now how thick is this stuff? Watch how thick it is. One, it wouldn't even come out of the bottle, I gotta squeeze it. And as I do, look at it. It's like molasses. And we'll compare it to the new Lucas stabilizer that's the lighter oil, watch this. Quite a difference. Now when people tested the stuff, they found that this old thick formula has a viscosity of 110 when the oil is 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Now the viscosity of the slow viscosity Lucas stabilizer is 19.7 at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a lot less than 110 of the old thick stuff. Now since the new oil is thinner, and look at the size, this thing is only 12 fluid ounces the old one is 32 fluid ounces. So, not only is it lighter, but you're not diluting the oil in your engine as much because you only have 12 ounces instead of 32 ounces. So it's safe to use in engines that have variable valve timing, that use really lightweight oil, that have hydraulic lifters. You're not gonna get problems that you will from the super thick additive of the old Lucas. Now what's exactly in this stuff? Well if we do a little history lesson, go back to when I was a kid in the 60s, the big oil additive was STP and it was really thick too, real thick. Especially when I was a kid up north, boy it was cold outside, you had to heat the stuff up in boiling water before you could pour it in an engine if it was outside. Now STP started in 1955. They have a special additive. They still use it today in their STP thick treatment and it's zinc dithiophosphate. 
It's an anti-wear additive that scientists know it works. It does lower friction. But it has one major drawback today of eventually ruining your catalytic converters. So when I was a young mechanic in the 60s, we didn't care about that. Cars didn't have catalytic converters in the United States until the mid 1970s. So we didn't care. We just put it in and we see these old junkers that were clacking and making all kinds of noise and we quiet them down quite a bit. And a lot of times it can make an old worn out engine last a little bit longer. I remember when I went to a Formula One race a couple years ago, I was talking to the engineers and they admitted to me that during the practice runs, they used their old worn out engines. They didn't want to use them in the race. They used them then and they put a heavier, thicker oil in their practice runs. So their engines that were more worn would last longer and not blow up as fast. But during the race, then they put in a good engine and they would use the lightest oil they could possibly have so that they'd have more acceleration. Now Lucas Oil came out in 1989. The original formula is really thick, just like the STP. But it doesn't have that zinc additive to it. So both of these don't have any of those fancy additives like zinc. They're all petroleum products, so you can mix them with any petroleum products that are out there. Strangely enough, it works really good in standard transmissions. Standard transmissions are just splash lubrications. The gears are inside the transmission housing, and the oil inside is just splashed around to lubricate the gears. As they wear and the space gets a little bit further between the teeth, they make noise, they can be harder to shift with your hands. And I've seen these things get a transmission that was really hellacious to drive, made all kinds of noise, work a lot better and make a lot less noise just by pouring this stuff in. And Lucas also makes an automatic transmission additive that's pretty thick too. Now you could use it in the older American cars. I had miracles myself when somebody bring me an old Chevy Tahoe or something and it would barely move down the road and I'd take a quart of the fluid out of the transmission and put a quart of the Lucas thick automatic transmission additive and all of a sudden it started to shift pretty good. That's kind of phased me when I did that the first time I thought how could something like that do that much? But it did in many cases. Don't you dare try that in a modern computer controlled transmission or especially a CVT transmission. Most things have to use their fluid and nothing but their fluid. Don't put any kind of additives in those things. So going back to the original topic, the new low viscosity stabilizer. You can use it in modern engines that have VVT or that have hydraulic lifters in them. Now it's no miracle in a can, you know, there, there are no miracles in cans these days anyways. <laughs> If you take care of your vehicle, use good oil, change it all the time. You don't need to use any additives really. But let's say your girlfriend was bad and never changed the oil in her car, or you got suckered into buying a late model car that's got high mileage and the people didn't maintain it, ah, I'd stick the stuff in, see what it does, cause really, hey, you got nothing to lose. The engine's making a lot of noise and it's wearing out. You're living on borrowed time anyway. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.